Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I don't know if you heard the intro, but that caller, he loves the trading room on Discord. You guys got to get in. All right. So the rally continues. Uh, the ES, I mean, this is up insane. We're, we're really looking for the 4400 level right now. Um, I'm sure we'll probably hit something like that this week. Something to uh, kind of keep an eye on. Some interesting volume movement right here today. Uh, we were speaking a little, about, little bit about GDX up 39, uh, 0.39, the dollar um, sitting at 103.63 right now. Um, I want to look at today some of the big gainers. We had Carnival Cruise, right? And these cruise lines got kind of smacked uh, during COVID, right? But, I mean, we have about a, almost a 13% increase today on, on massive volume. Uh, they had a pretty good outlook, according to some analysts, um, basically saying that the cruises aren't going anywhere. Uh, I, I wonder if there's some way that they're going to now, of course, you know, Gen X and the boomers are really what you want to look at because they have money to spend. Um, but I wonder if there's going to be a way that they can kind of acquire, um, you know, millennials and uh, Gen Z at some point. I don't know many uh, younger folks going on cruises. I'm, I'm sure they're a blast. Um, but. Regardless, I think there's some positive outlook on uh, their earnings. So we'll see if that follows through. Additionally, we have Oracle uh, running today. Uh, they're up in the AI sweep as well. Oh, they're up 6.2%. Uh, so uh, again, some positive outlook on, on their um, earnings. So yeah, some big, some big gainers today. Some uh, kind of interesting news regarding this, and, and we'll see how much it actually affects their, their companies, and I'm, I'm sure it will at some point. Uh, Uber is still up today, but Uber and DoorDash, right, so there's a kind of a new law going on in New York City, okay, and it's about imposing a minimum wage for these drivers. I think Dash is down today, but this seems a little bit more company-specific. Oh, no, we're up. Okay. We were down earlier today, but um, up 0.43. Uh, anyways, so over the weekend, the uh, NYC mayor, Eric Adams, he declared that beginning July 12th, uh, the city is officially raising the minimum wage for its app-based restaurant delivery workers, and that's obviously Uber Eats, DoorDash, uh, to $17.96 per hour, <laughs> and that's from its current average of $7 per hour. So, I mean, quite a, quite a substantial jump. Um, that number is expected to climb to at least $19.96 uh, per hour by 2025. Um, it could be worse for the delivery apps as the 2025 proposed rate is much less than the 2382 per hour the Department of Consumer and Worker Protections has previously proposed. And so it actually seems that this is kind of a, um, there, there was some kind of compromise made between the government and the lobbyists. Uh, certainly the comptroller of NYC had something to say about it. Uh, he believes that the rule doesn't go far enough. Uh, saying that the mayor um, acquiesced to the lobbying of DoorDash and Uber and that workers would actually be taking home just twelve sixty nine. You know, uh, regardless of that, this is definitely going to um, increase operation costs uh, for them. I think they have put them over to contract work, but they're still going to have to be paid like employees. Uh, pretty interesting. Also, I, I, you know, if we want to look at kind of you know, DoorDash in particular, right? It seems like these kind of disparities in uh, prices and movements today is a little bit company specific. Uh, you know, the word on the street from people I understand and I know, um, they are leaving DoorDash. If they've worked for DoorDash, they want to get away from that company. They don't apparently pay them very well, um, comparatively speaking. There's a few other companies that are kind of popping up doing the same thing. And uh, the drivers just simply make more money. Um, uh, a lady that I see every day at Publix when I go to get lunch, um, she does DoorDash as well. Uh, she told me this earlier, um, and I have a few other friends who are kind of uh, following suit. So uh, pretty interesting. We'll see how that goes out. Um, additionally, we have some news with Target. Um, the company has lost $15 billion in market value uh, since the start of a, a boycott that had been going on due to some of the products they were selling. Uh, J.P. Morgan downgraded the stock, um, so it's quite interesting. Obviously, we had a kind of similar situation go on with uh, Bud Light. Uh, they lost their number one consumed beer. I think they were down 60% in sales over the uh, Memorial Day weekend, which is uh, pretty significant. So we'll, we'll see if this, you know, I 
whether or not you agree with the with the protests, you know, it's still causing quite a bit of a um, an impact on this company. Target also suffers from some interesting issues regarding um, retail theft, right? And this is hitting a lot of the major, um, you know, brick and mortar retail uh, places. Um, let's take a look over here. Uh, the retail shoplifting is costing billions. The CEOs worried that they are powerless to stop it. Uh, this is retail executives are sounding the alarm on in-store shoplifting as theft burns a multi-billion dollar hole in their balance sheet. I mean, you had uh, even Walmart moving out of Chicago. I remember a few years back you had, I think, Walgreens or CVS was moving out of L.A. just because the thefts, uh, excuse me, the losses due to the thefts were just so high. Um, there was a study done, and this was in California, that people responsible for these thefts is only a small amount of people, right? It's, it's, it's a small group. I think it's something of like 200 uh, to, to 500 individuals who are responsible for most of it. So, you know, any kind of crackdown, and if these, you know, cities do get pressured into doing so, if um, more of these, you know, companies leave, um, I, I wouldn't suppose that it'd be that difficult if it's such a small amount of people, right? And, and these people are in the system, so... Uh, regardless, uh, it, it's quite interesting to see such a, a large cut into into the profit, essentially, into revenue. Um, this article is saying, uh, as if a possible recession and declining consumer sentiment wasn't enough to worry about, retail executives are struggling uh, with increasing amounts of stock disappearing or shrink in the industry parlance. Uh, the problem was talked about more on retailers' earning calls this quarter uh, than any other quarter on record. That was nearly 200 mentions. Uh, the increased attention is basically due to more large retailers calling out shrink, and, and that's the loss um, from the thefts, as a real problem, impacting both sales and margins. Shrink levels are increasing for almost all retailers. Uh, Relish, this is from Michael Relish, uh, is co-CEO of Apparel Brand Pacific Sunwear of California Incorporated, and that is PacSun, uh, big clothes company. Uh, the shoplifting losses are beginning to reach staggering levels target, uh, said that loss or stolen inventory will hurt profitability to 500 million. So, you know, not only are they getting boycotted, um, but they're also losing almost half a billion uh, to, to retail theft this year. Obviously, this is something that <laughs> really needs to be addressed. And if I were a shareholder, um, I'd be uh, putting the heat on target. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.